moved Saddam Hussein from power. The Allies met little resistance and the war was over quickly, but keeping the peace has proved to be far harder. The world has had to live with the consequences of the invasion, as Sarah Firth reports. They called it shock and awe. On the 20th of March 2003, the war against Iraq started with an air campaign. This was swiftly followed by a land invasion led by the US and the UK. The first phase of the operation was considered fast and efficient and quickly announced as a resounding success. I would like to think that maybe a year or two years time it's going to be possible for some of you to come back here and see the changes in this country that have arisen from what you've done today. But what followed saw US and UK government statements concerning Iraqi weapons programs discredited. Here in the UK, what was later nicknamed the dodgy dossier was a document used by the British government to make the case for its war in Iraq. Now it stated that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction that could be deployed within 45 minutes. No weapons of mass destruction have been found in Iraq despite repeated intensive investigation. Even with the evidence presented as justification for intervention in Iraq, the UK saw a huge political demonstration against going to war. Those who opposed the war now say they were vindicated. There was this sense of a headlong uh, crash towards a disaster where logic, rationality, intellectuality, the truth all went out of the window. But when I ask him about allegations he was a Saddam apologist, he's less keen to talk. It's part of the, the narrative, isn't it, no. that we don't know what's going to happen. It's very easy to vilify Tony Blair for well, what took place. You're, you're right. had to make a decision. You're right to say that we don't know what would have happened if we hadn't done what we did. So the only thing we can actually scientifically uh, analyze is what did happen after we did what we did. A blind man can see that invading Iraq was a cataclysmic disaster. An inquiry was set up to find out about the UK's involvement in Iraq. What is now known as the Chilcot Report took seven years to conclude. But when it did, its findings were unanimous and damning. Military action in Iraq might have been necessary at some point, but in March 2003, there was no imminent threat from Saddam Hussein. Former Prime Minister Tony Blair has apologized for the mistakes made, but stands by his decision. If people are going to say the decision was wrong, they have at least to consider the points that I'm making, that Saddam might have gone back and reconstituted his program as the Iraq survey group finds, and we might have had the same situation in Iraq today as we have in Syria. Fifteen years on, there is still no clear answer as to the rights and wrongs of intervention. And the world continues to feel the ramifications of a war that started with shock and awe. Sarah Firth, TRT World. Well, John Rees is a national officer with the campaign group Stop the War Coalition. John, good to have you with us. Um, it's clear that the, the costs of the Iraq war in terms of uh, finances, in terms of lives lost, has far exceeded what anybody estimated it would be. Uh, is there any uh, prospect in sight at this point of the kind of stable democratic country that the coalition set out to achieve? I really can't see it. I mean... I can't think of another country that's been so completely broken for so long as Iraq as a consequence of this, uh, of this occupation, the sectarian war, the killing, the inability of the government to even govern its whole, whole territory, its inability to fight its own wars. I mean, the war against the Islamic State, which was a product in part of the Iraq war, or the vacuum created by the Iraq war, fought by Iranian militias in part. You... Uh, is it possible to say there are any positives? Because there was a large part of the population that wanted to see Saddam Hussein oh, gone. Oh, yeah. We never doubted that for a, a moment, but we always 
always thought if there was going to be a, a model for the way in which Saddam Hussein was to be deposed, it would have to be a model of the Iraqi people doing it themselves. Because the whole problem with these wars of intervention, the, the, the humanitarian wars, is the people who fight the wars due to the ruling afterwards. If, like in South Africa, the domestic population gets rid of their tyranny, at least they have a shot at running the country afterwards. If the 82nd Airborne do it, the 82nd Airborne rule afterwards. Uh, there's obviously been a lot of scrutiny of this war and the reasons for going uh, to war. No British minister was ever forced to resign over the Iraq war. Do you feel that there is still a lack of accountability despite the Chilcot report? Yes, I mean Chilcot was set up so that its findings would never have any political consequence for people who were criticised by the report and that was a, a very big mistake. People expect that if very powerful people in positions of public trust do things wrong that they should be held to account like anybody else. The Chilcot report was, was very, very critical, but it, it concluded that there was nothing illegal about Yes, the and I think, that, I think that was a mistake. Uh, but it, even if you thought that illegality wasn't in it, it was clearly a gross political error with catastrophic consequences. And for nobody to have ever suffered, in fact, the main authors of it have profited massively in their careers subsequently. Now, if you're an ordinary Iraqi and you've seen your country destroyed by the actions of these people, and you see the people who drove us to war on what everybody now knows was a, not just one lie, but a series of lies, and you see them striding the world stage, pretending to be statesmen still, enormously wealthy, uh, there's got to be something wrong with that picture. And you now have this, uh, this, this relationship with uh, Iraq where they quite clearly, the government, want to get rid of, of foreign troops in their country, but they're still so dependent mm. uh, on, on foreign aid, on, on foreign support, uh, on foreign security. I mean, uh, you, you don't know, it's difficult to say where this is going to end. Well, if we are decades away from a self-sustaining Iraqi government, I will be very, very surprised indeed. And then we will be looking at a consequence for that country which will last longer than the rule of Saddam Hussein himself. Now, that's a terrible indictment of what's going on. But and just very quickly, because we are running out of time, do you think uh, any country will think twice before doing something like invading a country like Iraq? In I think that's already happened. We, we haven't had another shock and awe land invasion since. It's been drones, it's been targeted assassinations, but it hasn't been this. And I think that, uh, that legacy, as we see in the debate over foreign policy in this country to this day, is framed by that experience and by the and by the subsequent disasters in Libya and so forth. John, good to speak with you. Thank you very much indeed You're for welcome. your thoughts there. Now, Facebook is supposed to be all about